Let's add custom blocks to Minecraft. Minecraft modding courses with close to 100 topics ranging from custom tools and armor to custom block entities all the way to custom mobs linked in the description below. Alright, we find ourselves back in the once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding custom blocks to our mod over here and it's going to be very interesting indeed. One thing to keep in mind here at the very beginning, once you've added your blocks, you will not be able to mine them and they will not drop anything that is going to be happening in a future tutorial, so keep that in mind. But let's add the blocks. In the tutorial mod package, we're going to right-click new package called block, and inside of there, we will make a new class called the mod blocks class. And what will we need here? Well, first of all, we are going to need a public, static, void, and this is going to be the register mod blocks method where we will once again say tutorial mod logger and then putting out an info over here for registering mod blocks for exactly our tutorial mod mod ID. And once again, this is not strictly necessary, at least the outputting of the info over here. However, I do just like it. It just gives you a little bit more information in the logger. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to call this down here in the on initialize method right here. I like to group my register methods in groups of two. This has absolutely no practical purpose. In theory, you could all put them in one line if you wanted to. But of course, we still need to call this method regardless in the uninitialize method. Once we have done this, we want to create two helper methods. The first one is going to be a private static item. This is going to be of net micro item over here. This is the register block item method. And we'll have a string name parameter as well as a block parameter from net Minecraft block over here. Very important. And we're going to call this block. Now we need to register the block item individually because when you register a block, it actually doesn't have an item associated with it. The only thing that it has is the representation inside of the world. So you could spawn in the world, but it doesn't have an item with which you right click and then the block gets set down. That is actually the thing that we're registering in this register block item method. And the way this works is we're going to return over here registry, making sure we choose net Minecraft registry. Very important in this case. A tab to autocomplete. Then we call the register method passing in registries dot item comma new identifier so this is going to be a new identifier from net minecraft util over here once again tap to autocomplete i'm going to pass in tutorial mod dot mod id and then the second parameter in the identifier is going to be the name from over here after the first closing parenthesis we can say a comma and then in the new line we're going to say a new block item in this case as you can see passing in the first parameter the block from up there and then new fabric item settings with nothing else given to them as this is just a normal block item with nothing special. And now we need a second helper method, which is going to be the private static block. This is going to be returning a block over here. And this is the register block method passing in once again, a string name and a block block. Awesome. This will first of all call the register block item method. Quite important that we have this passing in the name and the block right here and then returning Registry, once again, making sure we choose net micro registry over here. Dot register, registries dot block this time, in a new identifier, tutorial mod dot mod ID, passing in the name, and after the first closing parentheses, passing in the block. There we go. Now, of course, all of the code is also available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository, so you should be totally fine. If anything here gets you an error or something like that, I highly recommend you compare this to the GitHub repository as everything should work in there. And it's very easy to make a tiny mistake over here somewhere, so do keep that in mind. But luckily, we only have to create these helper methods once, and then we can create as many blocks as we want with them. So to make a block, we're going to say public, static, final, and this is going to be a block, of course. And we're going to call this the ruby underscore block. Yes, we're going to make a ruby block. It's going to look very awesome. And this is going to be equal to the register block method that we've just created. We're going to pass in the name. That's going to be the ruby underscore block. Once again, as I've previously mentioned, this name right here, that is the name of the parameter. This gets generated automatically. You don't have to type this out. After the ruby block string, we want to do a comma and then we want to make a new block. So we're going to create a new block over here. A block constructor takes in a fabric block settings over here. There you go. And then here we have to either create new ones or we have to copy them from an or existing block. So for the sake of argument, let's copy them over from blocks.ironblock and then end it with a semicolon and no errors should be present. So if you do this, if we now middle mouse button click on the iron block, first of all, you're going to get absolutely smacked down with a million lines over here. Don't worry. We're only going to look at line 450 over here. And you can see here they are creating new abstract block settings. And if we continue to stay in this line, you can see it sets a map color, it sets an instrument, it sets the requires tool method, the strength needed to break this block and the resistance to explode it basically. And also the sound group here in this case. So 
If we do a copy of, and then choosing the iron block, all of those block settings are now applied to our custom Ruby block here as well, which is pretty cool because then we don't have to type everything out ourselves. However, you can also create your own. And to do that, instead of copy of, you just say create, and then you have to set everything yourself. So you have to set the strength and the map color and the sounds. Otherwise, it will just take default stuff. So do keep that in mind. I would basically say about... 90% of the time, you just want to copy from an existing block as usually there's enough overlap that it's fine. And you can also, of course, change this. So let's say, like, you know, everything here is absolutely amazing. Just the sound. I just want a different sound. Then you just pull the sound and you override it, so to speak. So that also works totally fine. Then you can just say block sound settings. And let's say, for example, amethyst block. And now this sounds like an amethyst block. Right now, that is the block added. And of course, we once again need some JSON files. But before we go to the JSON files, let's add it to our item group. This is, of course, as easy as just saying entries.add and then saying modblocks.rubyblock. And there we go. No errors should be present and your custom Ruby block should be added to your custom item group. Awesome. And then the JSON files. Well, for the JSON files for blocks, we will actually need a new folder. So that is going to be in the assets tutorial mod folder. We're going to right click new directory called block states. Very important that you write this correctly. It's block states or lowercase and with an S at the end there. And we will also need a new folder in the models folder. That's going to be the block folder. Once again, I will repeat the block folder, not with an S at the end this time. Similar in the textures, we also want the block folder there. So you can see now our full Tutorial mod assets folder directory is going to be tutorial mod and block states lang models, which contains the block in the item folder and then textures, which contains the block in the item folder as well. Now, let's start at the very top over here with the block states folder. Block states, the general overview is that blocks can have different states. If you, for example, imagine redstone ore, maybe you've like walked across redstone ore or something like that. It sometimes starts glowing or you can also right click it and it also starts glowing. Those are two different block states. And in the block states JSON file that we were going to create in just a moment, we can basically say, hey, there's different variants of this particular block. And depending on the variant, I want you to take a different block model. Now, in our case, we have a absolutely simple block, right? This one right here, a new block right here means that it has no block states. There's no variants. So we need a very simple block states JSON file, which points to one block model file. But... Let's create the block states JSON file. So we're going to right click on that folder, new file. I'm going to call this the Ruby underscore block at JSON. Very important that the name of this file right here, this one, has to match this name exactly. And then it has to have the dot JSON ending, of course. I'll type the contents out and then I will explain. So first of all, we're going to have variants over here. And those variants are going to be of an empty string. And then this is going to be the model over here. And the model that it points to is going to be tutorial mod colon block slash Ruby underscore block. And there we go. Now, what does this mean? Well, in this empty string over here, usually you would define the block state properties and what value they have for this model to be chosen over here. Model just means that it refers to a model file, a JSON file called Ruby underscore block in the tutorial mod. There we go. Models folder inside of the block folder. You can see block slash Ruby block means that we're looking for a JSON file in the block folder right here. And in this case, it will take it for, well, no variant because no variant exists. So it will just always use that model file. So let's create the model file. So we're going to right click over here, new file. And of course, it has to be called Ruby underscore block JSON. Because the Ruby underscore block is exactly what the block states JSON file looks for. So let's create this. And the contents of this, I will also type out and I will explain. But you will be able to see that they are quite similar to what we've seen previously. So there's going to be a parent, this time of cube underscore all. And it's going to have textures. And the textures are going to be for all. And the textures here are going to be of tutorial mod colon block slash ruby underscore block. And you will find that the block model JSON file looks eerily similar to the item model JSON file over here, just with a few differences. And this is exactly right. The parent over here, of course, determines how your block is going to take on textures. In this case, of course, it's going to be a cube and all of the textures are going to be the same texture. This is also determined by this all over here, basically saying, hey, all sides of the cube are going to have the Ruby block texture inside of the tutorial mod namespace under the textures folder in the block folder. And the name of the file is going to be Ruby underscore block dot PNG. So let's copy this over. There we go. So we have added this one over here. And now what would happen is if I set the block down in the world, it would be all great. It would look amazing. Right now, it would have no texture inside of the inventory. 
And also, it wouldn't have a name. Let's first of all tackle the name, because that's a little bit easier. So this is going to be in the lang file over here, in the en underscore use json file. And for this, we want to say block.tutorialmod.ruby underscore block. And then the name of this, the translated name of this is just going to be block of Ruby. So the key over here, at this point, this, the pattern here should be very, very straightforward. Oh, we're making a new block. It is under the tutorial mod mod ID, and the name of it is Ruby underscore block. This really should be no mystery at all anymore. And once we have this, we can now also create the item model JSON file. Luckily, that is a very easy JSON file. So in the item models folder, I'm going to right click new file, Ruby underscore block dot JSON. The name of this file, once again, has to match the name of the actual block given in the register block method. And the contents of this are going to be crazy. It's going to have a parent over here. And that parent is going to be tutorial mod colon block slash Ruby underscore block. Now, what does that mean? This simply refers back to the block model JSON file. And then it's going to display the block inside of your inventory as you've seen any block inside of the inventory. Basically, there's like 3D view that any block looks like. And it's just going to have the item texture applied to it that is specified in the block model JSON file. And with this, the block is done. So let's jump into the game and see our block for the first time. All right, find ourselves back in Minecraft and let's take a look. And there it is. The block of a Ruby has been added. And if I set it down in the world, you can see. And you can even hear if I set it down. It's using the Amethyst sounds. So that's pretty awesome indeed. Well, that is the block of Ruby. But one block is no block at all. So let's add a second one as well. As with the items, many beginners have been saying, I don't understand. What do I have to do for a second block? Once again, this is maybe an indication that you should check a little bit more of your Java knowledge. But if that's done, then I will show you. And of course, you literally only need to add this particular line over here, making a new public static final block over here of your new block. And that is it. You don't need a second mod blocks class. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely not. The only thing you need to do is you need to once again type in public static final. This could be another block. This is going to be the raw underscore Ruby underscore block. And this is going to be equal to a register block method once again. And we're going to call this the raw underscore Ruby underscore block over here. And this is going to be a new block of a fabric block settings. And we're going to copy once again blocks.iron block. I think that that's fine. How about we also give it the amethyst block sounds? I think that, that is totally fine. And that is the second block added. Now, of course, we still need to add it to the item group. There we go. Add it to the item group. And we, of course, also need the block states file, the translation, the block model file, the item model file, and the texture. So those you always need to add for each of your different blocks and or items. However, in a future tutorial, we're going to see data gen, which is going to make this about a million times easier. But for the time being, a cute little trick is that if you already have an existing file that works, what you can do is you can take it and you can drag it into the same folder while holding control. This will duplicate the file. It will then say, hey, what should we name it? And we know that the new block is called raw underscore Ruby underscore block. So we can just change the names, hit OK. And then instead of here, instead of pointing to the Ruby block model JSON file, we're going to just say this points to the raw Ruby block JSON file. Similar thing in the lang, what we can just do is we can just duplicate this line and we can say instead of the Ruby block, we want to translate the raw Ruby block. And this is then a block of a raw Ruby. Awesome. And the similar thing goes for the block model JSON file. This is going to be a raw underscore Ruby. Similar thing goes for the block model JSON file. This is going to be a raw underscore Ruby underscore block. There you go. And it also points to a different texture. And then lastly, the item model JSON file, similar thing, just calling it raw underscore Ruby underscore block dot JSON. And it points to the raw underscore Ruby underscore block block model JSON file. Awesome. Of course, let's get the texture over here as well. This is, of course, also going to be available to you for a download in the description below. And that is the second block added as well. So for completion's sake, let's jump into the game again and see our second block as well. All right, we're back in Minecraft and let's just take a look. And there you go. The block of a raw Ruby has now also been successfully added. And I think it looks pretty freaking awesome. So there you go. We got a raw Ruby. We got the block of raw Ruby. We got the raw blocks. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And once again, the blocks don't drop anything yet. That is 100% expected behavior. We'll see this in a future tutorial. But that is it for this tutorial right here. And the next one right here, we're going to add custom recipes to our mod. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.